The term zeitgeist is defined as the intellectual, moral, cultural climate of an era. The term movement simply implies motion or change. Therefore, the zeitgeist movement is thus an organization that urges change in the dominant intellectual, moral, and cultural climate of the time, specifically to values and practices which would better serve the well-being of the whole of humanity, regardless of race, religion, creed, or any other form of contrived social status. The Zeitgeist Movement in Function exists as a commutative representation of an organization called the Venus Project, which is essentially a conceptual and technological set of ideas which constitutes the lifelong work of industrial designer and social engineer Jacques Fresco. Mr. Fresco, along with his associate Roxanne Meadows, have been working for decades to establish the technical methods and educational imperatives which can transition society away from its current cycles of war, perpetual poverty, and pervasive corruption into an improved social design based on environmental alignment, practicality, peak efficiency, and most critically, a heightened standard of living, personal freedom and well-being for not just one nation or class, but for the entire human family. The ultimate materialization of these ideas is in the form of a new social design, updated present-day knowledge, and the design can be termed a resource-based economy. In the words of Mr. Fresco, we call for a straightforward redesign of our culture in which the age-old inadequacies of war, poverty, hunger, debt, and unnecessary human suffering are viewed as not only avoidable, but also as totally unacceptable. Anything less will simply result, simply results in a continuation of the same catalog of problems inherent in the present system. In summary, a resource-based economy utilizes resources rather than commerce. All goods and services are available without the use of currency, credit, barter, or any form of debt or servitude. The aim of this new social design is to free humanity from the repetitive, mundane, and arbitrary occupational roles which hold no true relevance to social development, and while also encouraging a new incentive system that is focused on self-fulfillment, education, social awareness, and creativity, as opposed to the contrived, shallow, self-interested, corruption-generating goals of wealth, property, and power, which are dominant today. We are not here to tell people what to think or believe. We're here to spread statistical information and socially positive value identifications in hope of bringing people into an awareness of the incredibly positive possibilities the future can hold. Once these understandings are fully realized, I think most people will never be able to look at the world in the same way again. And the problems we find as commonplace today will become simply unacceptable, motivating change. Our fundamental focus is finding the foundational sources of our social problems and working from that lowest common denominator to create solutions. Jesus says, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And that's the way we see the resource-based economy, or the Venus Project, that you can create all your spiritual aspirations, but make it a reality. That's what we're trying to do. People say, is, people say, is there life after death? But we think for so many people, there isn't life during life. But they take on old values that have been handed down to them and they take on old aspirations of their parents and their parents' parents and live a life that has been lived hundreds of years ago. We can house people, we can clothe people, we can have abundance all over the world if we use our technology wisely and maintain the environment. We don't have to chisel off of one another when in a monetary system. Somebody gets a toothache, they make a thousand bucks. Somebody dents a car, they make another two thousand bucks. We're, we're vultures after one another, and we don't really need to live that way. Because today, with the advent of technology and where technology is going, it could be used to improve everyone's lifestyle in a resource-based economy. All the people on Earth require clean air, clean water, arable land, and the necessities of life. Food, clothing, shelter, housing, and good education. This is where the Venus Project comes in. This is what the Venus Project has to offer to all nations, the necessities of life. It does not touch religious beliefs or social customs. Right. By getting all the nations to join together in the reconstruction of the, the restoration of nature, the reefs, the oceans, 
the rivers, the waterways, cleaning them out and rebuilding the soil, rebuilding our reefs. All nations can agree to that. Many people think I'm a communist. Communist has armies, navies, money, politics, social stratification. We don't have any of those things. We have nothing in common with any organization today. And communism is for the working class. But today, if you gave the working class a little bit more money, then you pay for that with the cost of the car. They raise the cost of the car. So that might be good for the working class, but it's not good for everybody else. So there's no way of segmenting or making this system just or equitable. We have to make a system that assures human rights. You know, when everybody has free access to goods and services, you don't have to fight for women's rights or black rights. It's an automatic in a society that's set up that way. You don't have to make laws don't steal. You don't have any opportunity to steal. You have things. You don't have to steal or hoard or be greedy. It would bypass that behavior. You can't find the answers by declaring a society democratic. You can only find the answers by research and development. You can't find the answers by putting people of high moral character in government. You can only find the answers by innovation, by studying the systems and the problems, and working on methods of alleviating those problems, not through law. Law is when you don't have a method of solving a problem. If people steal or hurt one another, you say it's against the law to hurt somebody. Well, if a person doesn't have the means to live by, he's going to hurt somebody to get the money or whatever they need. So that isn't dealing with a problem. Law is really avoiding problems. It's just nailing a proclamation on the wall saying, you don't do this. You see, it doesn't work. In the long run, you might cause people to consider an action before they take it. But all laws come into existence because of scarcity. When man sits down and, ma and legislates treaties and laws, they're all artificial. They're designed to keep people in line with the established system. All laws. They're not made for the benefit of man. They have no other way of controlling it. So when nations sign treaties with other nations, if they violate those treaties, they have warships to enforce them, armies and navies. So armies and navies are not to protect people. They're, protect, they're there to protect an established system. Every established system works in a similar manner. It takes the youngsters and say, what's the greatest country in the world? The youngsters say, I have the slightest idea. This country, this is the greatest country in the world. And God's on our side. Every country does that. And so you got a bunch of pinheads all over the world responding to these mechanisms of control. The scientific method, if applied socially, will work. It does not attain perfection. It's just a far better system than any other system that we know of today. In other words, I'm not talking about utopian societies where everybody is happy. There's no such condition. All social systems are in a state of evolution. That is, an established society is one that has found a way that worked, a way that worked for the people in control of that society. Whereas all societies are emergent, constantly evolving. There's no such thing at attaining a sane world. Sanity depends on the acquisition of information and applying that information to the well-being of all people and protecting the environment. That's what I mean when I use the word sanity. Chapters are the movement. The chapters, physical chapters, are what comprise everything that we do. I uh, am, uh, if you will, the international chapter coordinator for the Zeitgeist Movement, which uh, means I'm responsible for the performance of uh, every international chapter, and also I'm involved with a lot of the day-by-day -day organization of the movement. Yes, I'm the United States chapter coordinator. I basically help to facilitate the development of the U.S. state chapters okay. and I communicate information about 
What we are doing as a global movement through online voice chat meetings with state coordinators. Um, I uh, mediating conflicts, make sure that all the organizational processes are up to date and uh, uh, continue to evolve and uh, cooperate with all the other um, branches within the movement to make sure that the organization gets more solid day by day. That would be a general description of uh, what I do aside from uh, answering uh, hundreds of uh, emails, uh, if not daily. And I also help to connect them with internal resources uh, and help them with suggestions for activism in their state. Okay, great. And how are the chapters spreading awareness about the Venus Project through the Zeitgeist Movement? Well, right now they're holding online and local meetings. A lot of them are showing a Zeitgeist addendum at various locations in their communities and also the Zeitgeist Movement orientation and Jacques lectures, Peter's lectures that are available online. They're also doing some DVD handouts and brochure handouts and and having a presence at public events and also on university campuses. So um, also the state chapter coordinators are working to develop smaller sub chapters so that we have more easily accessible groups to connect with on a local level. So we're kind of replicating ourselves. Okay. About how it is that you facilitate people in uh, coming into this direction. <clears throat> Well, the emails that I get vary quite a lot. I get uh, emails that uh, that are from people that are interested in maybe uh, participating in a chapter, uh, possibly from a person that wants to start a chapter in either a country or in a part of a country, but also uh, from somebody that's just generally looking for a place to get involved. They might not even be wanting to uh, to get involved in coordination, but they might just be uh, not be aware of, of the fact that there's a chapter in their location and they'll, they're looking for it and they ask me for directions. It would take 10 years to change the surface of the earth, to rebuild the world into a second garden of Eden, to save our country, to save our environment, to save our youth, our stupidity, our conflict. The choice lies with you. We don't have the money nor the type of mentality required to save our society in politics or government. I am not your enemy. I am not trying to destroy things. I do not believe in revolution. I believe that ideas must be presented. They have to make decisions. But it doesn't matter because it's just a ride. And we can change it anytime we want. Only a choice. No effort, no work, no job, no savings of money. A choice right now. Right now. Right now. It's not just an environmental crisis, it's a moral crisis. And we're never going to solve that by being mere consumers. We have to say, no, we are creating either the solution or the problem. What I hear in my dreams is generations in the future screaming back to us in time, saying, what are you doing? Don't you see? We are at this critical point in time and we've evolved to be the leaders of our biological community and we are misleading. We are, we are causing the devastation to our very foundation of our life system that has given us birth.